Hello again everyone, this is Yoda123 and I am back for the second episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy VIII. And in this video we're going to be covering a little bit of training. Well, I say a little bit of training, it's just to get a few things sorted out for the uh, fire cavern. And then we're going to take on the fire cavern. And... Then... May take on a few other things. If not, uh, then we'll be dropping the video there and moving into the next video for the seed exam, since the seed exam is a very big area, and I'm sort of trying to cover each area in a single episode. So we'll uh, see how it goes. So last time uh, we did the introduction, uh, got beaten up by Siphon, put in the hospital. We then got debriefed by Quistus and told them we needed to go to the fire cabin in order to take part in the seed exam. Now, before we do that, we need to just get our hands on a few abilities that I really do recommend that you get hold of. So go into your infantry and click on GF. Then you want to go learn. You want to scroll up to this top one here, boost. I suggest you do this for both of you, especially Shiva, because you're going to need it. So we're going to have a... We're just going to get into a few scraps on our way there. We need to uh, get the AP to so we'll learn these abilities. We will require a total of 10 AP to unlock the boost ability. Now most of the people around here are pretty simple to beat. It's mainly bike bugs and stuff. And you will get the odd T-Rex sword as well, so just be careful of that. I mean, once I do apologise, I don't actually know what to do. So you can just run and cut out. And here it goes. Going on with the TV. Um, for my viewers, I am really sorry for what's just happened there. I don't know what's going on with my TV. Okay, uh, we're going to start this video over again. I'm really sorry for this. It seems there's a bit of a cock up going on with my TV. I must look into this. I'm really sorry. Okay, sorry about that everyone. Um, so I'm afraid there is going to be a little bit of a, a blackout during the video for this one. I am sorry about that. I don't quite know what happened. My TV just sort of, well, screwed up on me. So I apologise for that. Anyway, getting back into it and uh, on that note, I've actually made a little bit of a, a cock up. However, this one's going to be see. Basically, the cock up I made is I've got the junk. I'll show you how to do that in a second. Because it's essential for battles. The only good thing I didn't come up against the T-Rex or otherwise I'd have been screwed rather quickly. I'd have been forced to try to run. Okay, so, before doing any more battling, or in your case, before you start battling, I'm going to click on Junction, go to GF, and then select a GF, or in my case I always give Quistus uh, Quasgot. I don't know why, it's just the way I do things. I always give Squall uh, Shiva. Now, your GF will not get any AP unless they are equipped to a character that is in battle. So make sure that when you're going into battle, that the GF that you want to learn the ability is equipped to that person going into battle. Otherwise, it is not going to do anything. Now these are extra abilities, I'll explain about them later on. You can also junction magic again, I'll explain that a little bit later on as well. And what to junction. So, now that I've sorted that little uh, mishap up, and the TV is now working again, let's uh, carry on, shall we? As 
saying about the uh, gun blade and the wrench cooking, which is scrolls uh, limit break. He has four in total. Uh, these consist of um, Fated Circle, Blasting Zone, and Lion. Blast this lot away with shooting, get it done nice and quick, I think. GF and if you look in the bottom left corner it tells you what it's learning and how close it is so at the moment we're four out of ten so we need six more AP so let's just get ourselves into a few more fights and then we can move on to the fire cover now what the boost ability does as you might imagine basically improves the amount of damage you're going to be doing with your GF and I'll show you how to do that get to it. This one's not going to yield much in the pillar are usually worth about 2 AP if I'm not mistaken. And the bite bugs that we had with it earlier, they're worth 1 AP. Now with the bite bugs that we saw earlier that accompanied this guy, um, you can draw Now what the scan does is let you basically uh, see all of your enemies stack, what you do they get, what they're weak against, what they're resilient against. This gives you a complete breakdown of everything about them. So you can tell you what you can draw from them as well. draw some scans out of one of these bite bugs at some point and have a look. To be fair, I don't really use the scan much nowadays because I don't really need to because I know pretty much uh, what's weak against what and everything. So, but I will use it just as once to show you guys how it works and, and, and what it can do. This is a better combination. So we're looking at about five points worth. Of, no, four points worth. Of. Apparently, right? I can't add. How about that? <laughs> that was piddly ass damage. I just let the uh, shiva wipe them out. got the boost ability. Now you won't need to do anything with this, it's already automatically equipped it. So, 
Now we're going for the fire cavern. So you want to be heading to the little mountain just over there where I've gone to. And you'll find a little doorway which leads you into it. Now of course as you get in here, of course this is going to try and drag you into another tutorial. This time about the junctioning of magic. Again, if you want to watch that, by all means, I'm going to skip it because I already know what I'm doing. Uh, I will tell you a little bit more about the Junction of Magic myself a bit later on, so if you watch the tutorial and you still don't quite understand it, I'll try and sort of simplify it a bit. For now, we're just going to uh, get on with the story. So now she's talking about the Gunblade tutorial. Now. You can choose to review it, or you can choose to just go on ahead. Well, I already know what I'm doing with that, so I, uh, I'm going to skip it. Again, feel free to read the tutorials, you know, it will help. Um, you don't have to. It's completely up to you. Now, with the fire cavern, you'll have to select a time limit in which to do this in. But, now, here's the rub, so to speak. If you want to get a decent seed rank and get a decent salary of money coming in for purchasing items, you have to do specific things, which is where this comes in. And I know it's going to sound really flippin' stupid, and it makes no sense whatsoever, but actually, in order to get the highest possible score from this area, when the timer starts, you must get as close to zero seconds left on the clock as possible to get the highest score. I know it makes no sense whatsoever, but that is how it's done. So you have an option to choose 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes or 40 minutes. If you're looking to get a good seed rank and you think you're, you know, you're sure of yourself and you reckon you can do it, I recommend going for 10 minutes, which is exactly what I'm going to go for. Like I said, we need to get the timer as close to that zero mark as possible. Which, like I said, I know it sounds a little bit stupid, but... Well, I didn't design the game. <laughs> so, we're now in the fire cavern. Guardian alert! Or should I say, Guardian Force alert? That's right, we're going after a Guardian Force. And he's a very big, fiery demon type. Three piddly ass uh, bats. Don't bother wasting GS power on these, just. Go down to the quick Very low HP. Basically the lowest of the lowest in the game. Which does make perfect sense for the area. Mobs in this area don't want to leave me alone today. Normally I can get through the three quarters of this without actually getting a single battle. Today it seems the game is just test me, basically. I'll go with it. I would if I had scan. I'm going to wipe them now. Actually, this is a good opportunity to show you the boost ability. So, when the uh, GF Gorge Bar is empty, the GF starts, hold down your equivalent to the select button, or if you're using PS3, uh, or any other Sony console, it's the select button. Make sure to hold this button down. While the button is held down, the screen will go like this, and you'll have a little box appear in the uh, bottom right corner. Now, as long as there's no red cross in that box, you can do as much as you want. As soon as that red cross stops boosting, so like so, as you can see the red cross will just get off and disappear again. The red cross is there again, so you can't boost anymore from here. Yeah, 
hard to do that. So, um, these stuff as far as 250 I believe. Well, some of the GF cannons, I don't think they're that hard to do them. I suppose really it does come down to how much the button lashes. In my case, it's quite well broken. There is a draw point at the end there, I think it's a fire spell, so if you want to grab that by all means. However, I am going to show you a, another way to get a hold of uh, lots of different spells later on. So, you can either use the draw point or you can use my method as well. So again, these can be taken out. Okay, we're going to uh, run from this fight, simply because the timer is running down now and I do need some time to beat it for it. Although I could one hit these, I really can't be asked, not worth it. So to run from the fight, simply so hold down your equivalent of the L2 and R2 button. Again, with another fight. Jesus, I've never been this popular in the fire camp before. Uh oh, it's an exploding bomb. Run away! Okay, so. Now arrived at our destination, and like I said, Guardian Alert! And the Guardian Force in question is... That's right, no other than... Ifrit, the Fire Demon. So, this is why I said you need Shiva to have the boost ability, so you can do extra damage to it. He absolutely hates you, but. So, begin by chucking the first gun out there, because although it's not strong against it, but the Shiva is, it can still do a little bit of damage. It's definitely worth doing, trust me. Like I said before, we can lose things like damage to that button or your equivalent of that button. And then simply just press the square button three times you can. Obviously, we've got cross now to stop. Otherwise, your boost will go back down to where it started. Keep that in mind. Yeah, 
yeah, that'll do it. Uh, so, I'd say another volley of that, and we should be in the business. So we're going to pull quite Scott out again, just for the extra damage. I know it didn't do much last time at the end of the day. It's better than nothing. So he says, hmm, not bad for a human. So now we really need to hold the guard. Now he's really running against the clock here. I to make myself look bad on uh, Let's see to it if you actually take him out. do need to make sure that we actually take him out within the time as well, so... so. Oh, that was a piggly ass fire spell. Oh. Here we go again with Shiva. Got him. Come on. Got him. Whew. I'm not going to lie, I did panic a wee bit there. I thought I'd had it. So the timer will continue to run down for a moment while it's just going through the last bit of the battle. However, if the timer hits zero now, do not panic. It will not be game over now. Once if it's defeated, the timer will cease. So I've finished up with about 20 odd seconds left on the clock, which is really good, so we should get quite a high score towards that particular part of the seed exam. So once you beat Ifrit, he joins you. And then you'll be able to use him, basically. So again, the first thing we want to do with Ifrit is to get him to learn the uh, boost ability. But before that, it seems Crystal has decided to drag us into another tutorial. Again, if you want to watch this, by all means go for it. If not, then again, it doesn't really matter. I already know what I'm doing, so I'm going to skip it. Okay, so with that done, we need to make our way back out of the fire cavern and back to Balam Garden, which is where I'm going to leave it when we get back to Balam Garden. But hey ho, we can always use the extra experience, so it's, it's, it's all good. And of course, when you beat Ifrit, you'll also get his uh, card for the card game. Very useful one to have, it's a very high level one, so keep that in mind. However, later on, uh, you will have to part with it temporarily, but do not fear, you can get it back. Uh, and I'll go into a bit more about that later on when we get to it. It's going to be one of those days where I can't move this an inch without being attacked. But it's okay because at the end of the day it's still experience. I think we'll uh, let Shiva have her way with me. What say you guys and girls? Not my viewers.
that bother some videos. Oh, for God's sake. Okay, I'm gonna run from these battles now because this is getting a little bit tedious. Let's only get us out of the fire cavern now. Otherwise we're gonna end up with an entire video of nothing but back in this video. I really don't like about this game. Don't get me wrong, this game is more time to play with Final Fantasy VIII. It's a brilliant game and everything. It's just... What's the point of putting a run button in if it's going to take forever to actually just, like, run for the fight? Otherwise, by the time you've actually had a chance to run, you're going to be dead anyway. It makes no sense. Get out of this fire cavern one way or another. Good thing I'm not on the timer anymore, otherwise, I'm just screwed right now. right on the exit, come on. Now of course, although we're leaving the fire cavern and stuff that's in here, it's not the last time we can actually come across this lot. Um, because later on there is an area that we'll be going to much, 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 much later on in our journey. And basically this area, you can come across literally any type of monster from the entire game, including some of the bosses you've defeated in the past. But don't worry, your team's going to be a lot stronger by then. Well, if you've trained correctly and done everything I tell you. The only bit that I might not be able to guide you on just yet is the chocobo bits because I don't really bother with them. So uh, I will have to brush up on that. It's the only bit of the game that I will hold my hands up and say I don't know much about. Purely because I've never really needed to use them. Uh, but I will brush up on it and I will try to so like put a guide out for that. Let's just stop that a moment. Okay, so I've stopped on a few scans. Not that we're gonna really need them, but I thought I'd show you how the scan ability works. Like I said, it analyzes your opponent. And then in the bottom left corner you've got how much HP it's got and what its level is. So it's a level 9 flying monster. Uh, it also tells you what it's moving against, so in this case it's ice and wind. It has 162 HP. Look at the top of the screen, you can see the tone of the rest of the screen, like stats and sense. And on the right hand side, it tells you what it is and a little bit about it. So it's a bug monster that flies. Stay calm and attack precisely. It's not a very strong enemy, it says. So if you want to learn more about your enemies, feel free to use that scan ability. You'll have to draw as many as you can for these bright bugs. As I go through this guide and I come across different ones, I'll try and tell you a bit about each of the many ways we go. But if you want more information, like I said, just use the scan ability, it's easy enough for me. And then when you look at it, so you just press the action. No, try and delete it. Well, one of the buttons. It'll bring you back out of it. Uh, 
can learn him to other influences, which I'll show you how to do. That's this battle. And it's quite good. Balam Garden. Uh, I'm just going to show you how to sort out Christmas's blueprints. So throughout the game, there'll be certain items that will teach her uh, certain limit breaks. You'll know when it's an item you can because it will come up with her name on the right hand side of the screen. So you click the item, then click her. And voila, she's learned a new ability Ultra Waves. I'll show you at some point, maybe during the, well actually no, it won't be the next video because this is the last time we'll see Quisters for a while. Uh, but the next time I get to use her I will show you what it looks like. So let's pop back into Balam Garden which is our destination point. So we've made it back to Balam Garden. Chris is now just quickly debriefing us. And she wants to drag us into another tutorial, this time telling us how to teach GF uh, new abilities and things. But again, I'm not going to bother with the tutorial because I already know what I'm doing. And as I go through the game, I think you'll pretty much learn how to do it anyway because I'll try to show you as best I can. So she's telling us to meet in the F1 lobby after getting changed into our uniform. We're going to do that in the next episode. So, we're going to call it there. Next time we'll be taking on the seed exam. So be sure to uh, join us for that. I've been your host, Jedi123. Thanks so much for watching. Till next time. Goodbye for now.